Hey guys, welcome to the channel and as you've probably seen from this title, this is the review of the Alienware 32-inch 4K QD OLED gaming monitor AW3225QF and we're just going to call this the Alienware 32-inch curved uh, gaming monitor going forward. Now, before we get into this, there are a couple of disclaimers. Number one, I'm not a PC gamer, I'm a console gamer ever since the era of the PS1. So if you're someone that is a PC gamer and looking for a review of this monitor to be like your computer monitor plus a PC gaming monitor, then I suggest you look elsewhere because there are a set of fantastic reviews from the likes of Monitor Unboxed and so many more that have gone in deep on how this can be a great PC gaming monitor. But if like me, you've been a console gamer and are considering this monitor, then I suggest you watch this because I think I have a few interesting tidbits to contribute for the review of this monitor. But before we get into that, I would like to tell you a short story about my relationship with gaming monitors and consoles. So the year was 2009 and I had moved to Delhi NCR for the first time and I brought my PS3 and Xbox 360 with me. I had just started working and I had this Samsung 720p monitor which was probably one of the best budget normal monitors non-gaming that you could buy at the time and I had brought my old Sony speakers from Pune to Delhi which were you know those it had that big central amplifier part which had the three rotating cassettes uh, three rotating CDs two audio cassettes and a radio jack like this big thing with two big wooden NK Sony speakers so I brought that with me from Pune and I bought the Samsung monitor and for the PS3 which had uh, the AV out as well as an HDMI port. I used an HDMI to DVI cable to connect it to the monitor because that monitor had a DVI cable. For those of you that don't know what a DVI port is, please go ahead and Google it. It'll be a pretty good uh, lesson in history of computer ports. And through the AV cable, I used the aux port on my old Sony system. I'm actually going to try to dig out a photo of this setup if I do have it to put it here. Connected it via the red and uh, white aux cable to the aux port of the main Sony system so that I could get audio. On the Xbox 360 side, I'm not sure how many of you remember, but the big AV port that the uh, Xbox 360 had, you could buy a separate cable which had VGA for video and it had the audio output which is the red and white separately as well. So that was the setup that I had made in this little room that I lived in in 2009. Now fast forward to 2014 end or 2015 beginning, I had a PS4 and an Xbox One and I had to upgrade this rig of mine, right? Just before the consoles came, I wanted to upgrade my rig. And I went ahead and after consulting a lot of people that I knew, I upgraded to the BenQ GW2760HS which was a full HD 60 Hertz monitor and it was very well reviewed in India at the time around 2014-2015. Um, I think it had a box price of about 21,000 rupees but on sale I got it for 15,000 rupees. It had one HDMI port and it also had a 3.5 mm output which was very important for me because the speakers that I chose to pair uh, with this monitor was the Klipsch Pro Media 2.1. I got those at that time on Flipkart for 12,000 rupees. So I did save up a lot of money to buy these two before I got the PS4 and Xbox One because I knew that I needed something that was 1080p and it had to be 60 hertz because I presumed the consoles would be able to do 60 hertz at that time. How wrong I was, but those, that monitor and speaker setup was absolutely perfect and sublime. And I had an HDMI switcher, which I connected the two consoles to, and I connected that to the monitor. And I think I had a fantastic gaming experience before I upgraded to the televisions that that I have uh, reviewed on this channel. So just a little bit of history between my consoles, monitors and myself. Uh, like I said, if I could find those photos of those products uh, uh, as I had as a setup, I will definitely uh, put them as a part of this video. So what do we have with us today? Today we have with us this Alienware 32 inch 4K QD OLED monitor, again called the AW3225QF. It's priced at a whopping 1 lakh rupees. Now, remember, technology has advanced so much right now that we have monitors that are starting from 10, 15,000 rupees, all the way going up to a lakh and a half from 21 is to 9. Uh, aspect ratios, high refresh rate, higher resolutions, giving televisions a run for their money when it comes to performance. So uh, we are going to talk about value for money towards the end. But I just want to tell you that monitor technology today is at it, it's the best time to buy a monitor because you are spoiled for choice, unlike my time uh, back in the day. So this uh, monitor is priced a little over 1 lakh rupees. It has a 1700R curvature. So it's a curved monitor. And I can tell you from the start that no matter what angle I looked at this monitor, 
it looked absolutely sublime and like other monitors I have seen in the past where you can make out a bit of a color shift where the curve is, you cannot see anything such, you, ca you cannot see any color shift on this monitor and that is because it is a QD OLED monitor. It has a quantum dot layer as well as an OLED panel. It can hit 1000 nits of peak brightness at small windows. Again, there are a lot of reviews online that can actually go and justify the HDR performance of this, uh, this monitor. It also supports Dolby Vision, which is great. When it comes to connectivity options, you have three USB Type-A ports, two HDMI ports, which are HDMI 2.1 compliant, which means you get all the bangs and bells and whistles that you can expect from the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and the latest set of GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD. And it also has one display port. Um, in terms of ports, it's absolutely loaded, except, except for the fact that it does not have a 3.5 mm port. Why? For someone like me that has both the consoles, or if you're someone that has both the consoles, you are going to want to employ both the HDMI ports uh, for each consoles rather than resorting to a switcher which can have some sort of input latency. I will have to go back and check if there are HDMI 2.1 switchers available, so on and so forth. But just natively connecting both of them means that you are going to lose out on one port which is also the EARC port, which means that if you connect a soundbar to this monitor, you can get like a home theater kind of an experience. I did connect my Yamaha YS209 via HDMI to the ARC port and it worked completely fine fine so yes if you just have one console and maybe a pc then you can use the display port as well as one hdmi port and use the earc port for an audio device but i wish i wish it had a 3.5 mm or an optical port to connect an external audio device like a set of speakers that you have because that would have just made this the perfect monitor to buy and that is my only gripe with this monitor is no 3.5 mm output or any other form of audio output and the lack of built-in speakers, which I honestly don't care. A lot of people care about having like 10 watt, 5 watt, 15, 20 watt built-in speakers. I don't care. If you care about that, it's a con for you, not for me, but the audio output is. In the box, you get a variety of ports as well. You get a power cable, you get an HDMI 2.1 cable, you get a DisplayPort 1.4 cable, and you get a USB 3.2 Gen 1 uh, cable as well. So it's, it's fantastic that you get these cables in a box with a monitor, which is a con with TVs, because when you buy a TV, you only get the power cable and a remote control in it, right? Now, while I was talking to a lot of people about this monitor, a lot of people brought it up that other monitors from Samsung and uh, from LG come with their television smart OS as a part of uh, the monitors, which does not come with this monitor. Now, I don't know why that would be a deal breaker for you, because if you have a console or a streaming device or a PC, you natively have all the smart elements of the television uh, as a part of your external device may not be built into the monitor itself. And I don't think that's a con. Having a smart operating system um, is as good as having the smart operating system on your TV if you do not have external devices connected to it. And since this is a monitor, you are going to have either a console or a PC connect to it, connected to it, which means you can access the likes of uh, Netflix and Prime Videos and Apple TV and your local collection of movies if you have any. So not being a smart monitor, in my opinion, again, is not a con because if they save the money from the smart TV features and put that into adding more productive features like higher refresh rate or better panel quality, I would choose that any day. So again, not having a smart UI is not a con for me. Speaking of the UI navigating, uh, the monitor's uh, settings is fairly simple. You have a single button below it. Uh, it comes up with this nice uh, grid of the settings right at the bottom there and you can change them even from Dolby Vision to HDR to SDR to the resolution to different game modes. It's a 4K monitor with 240 hertz refresh rate so if you're on a PC you can take advantage of the high refresh rate. Not so much on the consoles yet. Looking at the PS5 Pro with you know a little bit of hope but I don't think it'll go that high in terms of refresh rate. Um, yeah, so having said that, as far as monitors are concerned, you're getting a fantastic deal for 1 lakh rupees. And if you are someone like me that has, uh, you know, a gaming setup where you have limited amount of space, like back in the day, I did have limited amount of space. So it was difficult for me to have a big TV or something like that. I did need a small monitor. So there is an absolute use case for you to consider a 32 inch monitor over a TV. Having said that, how much are you actually paying for a smallest size OLED TV from each brand today? So I've, as of me recording this, you can get the 48 inch Samsung S90D OLED TV for about 1.2 lakh rupees. It does support all the features of HDMI 2.1. It is a 4K OLED TV from Samsung and it has a refresh rate of 144 hertz. Moving over to LG, as of me recording this, there are two models which are available. The LG C3 
at 42 inch at 1.05 lakh rupees on Chroma's website. I didn't go outside to a shop and check it out, but this is the price on Chroma's website. And the 48 inch LG C4, which is the 2024 model OLED Evo panel is available at 1.24 lakhs. And Sony, as far as I could find, doesn't have their sub 50 inch OLED TVs in India. If you want to go the QD OLED way, you have to go with last year's A95L 55 inches, which is priced at a whopping 2.5 lakh rupees on Chroma. So Sony is definitely out of the budget for someone that's looking for a display for about 1 lakh rupees. But if you are a console gamer like me, yes, this Alienware monitor is absolutely fantastic. But if you're someone that lives with a family, has a spouse living with you, then you may want to consider a TV at just that much more price because you do get built-in speakers which are fairly decent on all these TVs that I've spoken about. And yes, there is the upgradability factor that you can add a soundbar, connect your Tata Sky set-top box and just have a few more connectivity options which you, which may not be the case if you're a PC gamer. If you're a PC gamer, the monitor is definitely going to be more immersive. Again, if like me, you are, you, you're single and you have just a small room and you want that absolute immersive experience, I would go for this monitor over a TV. And I set up this monitor right next to my LG B9. There's a stark difference between the two, which we will get to when we talk about the performance. But yes, if I had to choose for 1 lakh rupees an OLED TV like the B9 or the G2 that I have and I've reviewed on this channel, I unfortunately haven't reviewed the TVs I have mentioned here. But I did keep this monitor next to them and the kind of brightness that you get, the contrast is almost the same because they are all OLEDs next to each other. But the kind of brightness that you get out here in that form factor at a distance of about three and a half, four feet with that controller in your hand, headphones on my ears, the immersion was absolutely next level, which is why you would consider a monitor. For a more cinematic large screen experience, I can understand you going in for a TV. Now let's come into the pure performance of this monitor and on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X I played a bunch of games which I'm going to talk about and show you guys right now. So on the PS5 let's start with God of War, Ragnarok, I was in Svartalheim where you are in these underground areas and it kind of has a slightly more sapient yellowish tone to it which was more punchy without being oversaturated on the console. Remember I did go and calibrate the console to be at the you know the brightest bright and the lowest uh, darkest darks as you can when you set up your console with a new TV. So the glowing colors of the orbs which are your health orbs or even the bright white when you you know go through the fast travel uh, mode in God of War Ragnarok it is just absolutely blindingly white which is a testament to the brightness of this monitor and the fact that you have these dark caves that you're going into you can see sections of the cave that I, I swear I could not see on my television again I sit further away from my TV but the lighting conditions in the room are absolutely identical Dirt 5 is a great HGIG game which is a great way to judge whether the peak brightness of uh, the monitor, what your console is saying, is at the same level or not. So uh, when you play a game like Dirt 5, the specular highlights in the sky are something that you are going to be able to see extremely clearly and without any loss of detail. Spider-Man 2, the opening act where you are finding Sandman, there is a lot happening on screen, which kind of just gives you this really, really good immersive experience. The uh, colors on Spider-Man and Miles Morales' suit are just absolutely sublime and the highlights just pop. It, it, the reds look red, the blues look blue, there's no better way of saying it. Now, a game like Gran Turismo 7 does not have ray tracing as a part of the game itself. It is a part of the replay only, but still having said that, you know, sitting in the cockpit of the car or just the environments or just the models of the car, they all look absolutely sublime on this monitor. Moving over to one of my favorite games of last year, Alan Wake 2. Now, this game has one of the most cinematic realistic appeals I have ever seen in a video game. And the fact that in the opening sequence or when you're in the forest or when you have this awesome dance sequence that I'm not going to spoil in case you haven't played the game. The, this game is, uh, is made in environments which are really, really dark. So the low light performance of your TV or monitor has to be absolutely brilliant. And I kid you not, I have played Alan Wake 2 on my LG B9 and my LG G2. And when I played the game on this monitor, there were certain elements in the dark environments that I could not see on my TV, but they were very, very clearly visible on this monitor. Yet again, another testament to how absolutely good it is. On the Xbox side of things, know that this monitor supports Dolby Vision Gaming. And if you're someone that wants to take advantage of Dolby Vision Gaming, you can do that. I personally left it on HDR Gaming because I remember seeing a video by HDTV test where Dolby Vision Gaming from the Xbox wasn't exactly the best experience, especially for a game like Halo. And I've just been sticking to HDR since then. No other reason. If you guys want me to experiment with Dolby Vision Gaming, you can let me know. 
Now, on the Xbox side of thing, I just played two games. One is Doom Eternal, which again looks absolutely sublime because when you go in for the gory kill, glory kills, or if you are going to, you know, take on an enemy who's flashing, especially when they're flashing, to do that takedown when uh, you need health from them, it is just so bright on this monitor. It looks absolutely killer. Even a game like Gears 5, now the sequence that I'm showing for Gears 5. Uh, is a sequence which has a little bit of darkness because you're going through a dark area before you encounter the enemies and over there once again I could see details which I otherwise missed on my TV. So once again if you are someone that's looking for the penultimate gaming experience you are going to get it on this Dell monitor. Yes a lot of people are going to say that it's expensive for 1 lakh rupees but the value for money proposition honestly is about what you uh, derive as value for money right again going back to my original story is for the same price point in 2015 for under 30,000 rupees I think I could have gotten a very good normal TV onto which I could have connected the consoles at some point uh, but I just wanted the great the best experience I could get for that price point similarly out here by spending a mere 20,000 rupees more you can get an OLED TV but there are aspects of this monitor that are exclusive to this monitor which are in line with its panel and its brightness and its picture performance when it comes to gaming and I tried it on both the premium consoles that are there. I did check out a lot of other content in Dolby Vision as well as HDR and SDR such as movies and regular content that you would watch. So just mentioning a few of them out here. Um, the Fallout show on Amazon Prime Video where the protagonist is leaving the vault for the first time. You have this bright light of the real world coming in and a few dark areas which is again another testament to the contrast of this monitor. Again a beautiful, sublime, great experience. I know I'm repeating myself but that's what it is. Even Spider-Man Homecoming on Netflix, which is an SDR, it's a great experience to watch on this TV because you have the bright reds and blues of his costume and this part where he's climbing the Washington Monument, is it just looks really nice, rich and vibrant and it looks way brighter than it should in SDR and that's not necessarily a bad thing because the content just looked very good, especially if you were watching it in a completely pitch dark room. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation again in SDR where you have Tom Cruise on the motorcycle. This is a great sequence to check if the monitor or TV that you have can show skin tones properly because you do have this nice yellow backdrop of the desert where he's riding the motorcycle. But if you have a really poor quality TV, Tom Cruise's skin looks a little bit like he has jaundice. Um, it's something you'll notice fairly easily on budget or very cheap TVs. But on this monitor, the skin tones look very natural, very good. And even just watching a couple of YouTube videos in HDR just to see how well they do, it is absolutely fantastic. Bringing me back to my only con. When I was gaming, I connected my headphones to either the 3.5mm jack on the controller or the PlayStation uh, Pulse headphones to the console itself. But when I was watching a movie and someone came in and wanted to hear the audio, I couldn't because both the HDMI ports were occupied. Having said that, if Dell is ever going to launch a successor to this monitor, I highly, highly, highly request an additional audio port. I know it's a cost and it could lead to the cost of the monitor going up. It may seem small to people, but there is a lot of engineering cost that goes into it and I'm sure Dell made a lot of strategic decisions before they decided to remove an audio port from this monitor. But I would highly request it come back because if you're in the market for a premium monitor that you can keep for at least a decade. I mean, if, if I bought this monitor, I wouldn't sell it for a decade just like I have done with my TVs. Uh, and that's just a testament to the quality of output you're getting if you're a console gamer at 4K for whichever game supported, at 120 hertz for whichever game supported, at variable refresh rates because I could barely make out any tearing or anything on this monitor, especially on games that are well optimized for VRR on both the platforms. When it comes to value for money, I just like to repeat myself again and say that if you're in the market for a premium monitor, then value for money is very different for you rather than someone that's on a budget. But yes, if you have a budget of about a lakh of rupees and you are looking for a monitor and not a TV, then you can definitely consider the Dell Alienware 32 inch QD OLED monitor. It is absolutely sublime and it's one of those experiences that once you have it, you can't go back to something that's inferior. There you have it guys, that was my review of the Dell 32 inch 4K QD OLED gaming monitor, the AW3225QF. As always, if you like this video, you can uh, like it. If you have any queries, you can leave your questions in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them. I will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.